Blockchain and Bitcoin, I believe, are currently at the point that the internet was in the 1990s. We have an opportunity here and now to create, using this technology, a more prosperous and equal world. We are going to have systems that are real partners in helping us get our work done. And I believe that it's our job, yours and mine, to help each other break out of our mental prisons and build a world that we can really be proud of. My hope for the future is that this enormous amount of data that we're going to produce with instruments like the SKA and this exponential technology expansion that we're seeing with things like AI and algorithms is going to come together. We are in a race between how fast we screw up our planet and how fast we innovate in these new technologies, and it is not obvious what's winning. We know the future is broken. Let's stop worrying about it. Let's get on and fix it. And starting this afternoon would be a good place. That toilet will be the most wired appliance in your home because we're going to have little DNA sequencers in the bottom, and every time you flush it, all of your cells and your food cells and everything else it's going to get analyzed, it's going to go out to the cloud, and emails will go out to you and your doctor, your nutritionist, and your spouse. The tech sector continues to grow. It's our third largest export now. I don't see any limits to it, because what we can do today is we can run global companies successfully, and we can solve global problems uh, from right here in New Zealand and right here in Christchurch. Our reach exceeds our imagination. The biggest risk is not thinking big enough. That's the problem we all should tackle. I believe that the automotive industry is going to move from being about selling cars, which is what it's been for over a century, to being about selling rides. And that this is going to be a giant shift for the auto industry with some many large consequences behind it. We need to unimagine the way we've always done it, and we need to reimagine the way we're going to do it in the future and we're open to external input in that. In September this year, there were 600 teenagers that converged on three cities. They wanted to make a difference to a billion lives. What better way to create the future than by considering the way that we educate our youngest people? So this is just a way that we turned a little smartphone into a device that takes a little sound clip, uploads it to the cloud. We obviously decided to call it a cacophonometer. I think autonomous airplanes are actually easier than autonomous cars. Because if you're at 30,000 feet and you make a, a little mistake, there's really nothing to hit. I think it's actually easier to make an autonomous aircraft. And for that matter, most of our commercial aircraft do just that. The pilots are up there, they take the plane off, maybe. Put it on autopilot, and when it's time to land, maybe. They go ahead and land it. So, so do we need people in the cockpit? And I would argue that at the moment we do.